Hello and welcome to the Computer Lab. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to create the call to action subscribe button that you can see on the screen now. Uh, and I'm going to show you how to create that using free programs that you have on your Mac or that come free with the Mac OS. Unfortunately, if you've got Windows, obviously this isn't for you. Um, by all means, watch the video because uh, it's good to learn these types of techniques. Uh, but these are all programs that come uh, free with Mac OS. So without any further ado, let's get into the video. Okay, so the first one we're going to do is actually get the sound by the click of the mouse button. You don't necessarily have to do this bit. I just like to have the click there um, as it um, the mouse icon swooshes across and hits the actual subscribe button. So we're going to get the actual mouse click, and you can get that from the program iMovie. So obviously, if you don't know how to open iMovie, just push the command button and the space bar, type in iMovie like so. It will pop up and then just push enter or return on your keyboard and it will open iMovie up. Okay, so this part is very short. All we're doing is grabbing a soundbite from our iMovie and then saving that into a folder so we can use that in a keynote in a second. So we're going to create a new iMovie, click on movie. And then from here, we need to grab the audio for the actual click. So along the top, making sure you're on my, um, my movie one or whatever you've named yours, click on audio in the top. Uh, bar here and I'm just going to go up into the search box in this corner here and type in mouse like so and you can see there's a mouse click audio file here and if I push play so you can hear the click there just, I pushed it a couple of times because it's only one second long so from here we need to drag that into our timeline down at the bottom so I'll highlight the actual computer mouse click drag it down and then let go on your timeline Make sure it's in there because you should see the green box. Obviously, you can play it again, like so if you want. And then from here, we're going to save that file as an audio file. So we need to go File, go to Share. We want to go to File. It will bring a box up. Here, we need to name it something. So I'm going to call it uh, Mouse Click, like so. And we want it to be, yours might be on video and audio. We want the format to be audio only. And then the format can leave that on AAC. Click on next and then pick a uh, place to save this somewhere that you're going to use your files from. So I'm going to create a folder and just call it um, subscribe uh, call to action and then click create. So this is my folder I'm going to save everything to. Leave it as mouse click and then click save. Okay and that's uh, it done now for uh, iMovie. I will just briefly flip back into it in a bit later on just to show you how it looks the actual subscribe button so I'll just minimize that one okay so now let's get to the actual um, call to action icon itself so we're going to open keynote and we're going to open a new document and then from here we just want the basic white one so we'll just double click on the basic white and then we'll open up the keynote itself so you see this is the um, sort of basic presentation we're going to delete all these um, icons that are in it, these text and boxes that are in here so click on the actual box and just click the delete key and it gets rid of all these and this then leaves us with a blank sheet to work from okay so the the most important thing that we need to make sure we do because this is when we're going to export this at the end is to make sure it is uh, set to transparent so making sure your page is selected we've got background here and we click on the little white box and we've got no fill and if i click no fill it will go black here so i might change it back to another color so you can see what the button looks like as we're working with it but before we save the actual file we need to make sure that's on no fill so i'll click on no fill and you can see it all goes black uh, and now we can start adding stuff i will just change it back briefly just so you can see what's going on so I'll maybe change it to a blue just so you can see uh, the actual um, shape taking taking shape as it would be so let's go on to shape and then let's pick the uh, this is going to be our box that goes around the actual image so we're going to pick the one with the uh, shape with the actual curves on the corner like so and then we're going to drag this out uh, and bearing in mind what we're going to try to do here we want the actual shape to have um, the obviously subscribe text in the middle as well as a triangle here we want the mouse icon to sort of come from the right across like that and then up so we need to make sure it's big enough so it's keeping a good resolution uh, and also it's enough room for the actual mouse icon to swoop across from sort of from here to there so i'm going to leave it like that i think that's about the right size and then i'm making sure the box is selected i'm going to make it red 
So that's now I can bear in mind I can resize this in a minute, um, but I'm just going to add a few things now into it and I might resize it as I go along. So now I'm going to add the triangle on the end. So, in fact, before I do that, if you look at the corners uh, where the actual uh, curve is on the corner, I might want to change them so they're a bit more uh, curved. So you've got on the options, you've got your style, text, and arrange in this top corner. And you'll notice on the arrange box, as long as I've got this shape selected, I can then change the corner radius here. It's currently on 18 points. And as I go up, you'll see this curve increase, which I'm going to do a bit. So I'm going to raise it up to, I don't know, maybe, maybe about 42. I think that maybe looks better. So I'm going to leave the corner radius at 42. Then I'm going to go to shape again. And I'm going to pick another shape. So now I'm going to have the triangle. So I'm going to hit the triangle. And then I'm going to drag that across into my shape. Make sure it's on the center bar. So as I drag across, you can see the center bar appear. And that's telling me that yellow bar, telling me that it's in center of the red bounding box and I'm going to spin this round so I can do that by pushing command key on the keyboard keep my finger on the command key and then left click on the mouse and then drag it round and it changes the angle so you can see it goes to about 270 where it's going to be about right I can also make sure I'm on the arrange box up here change it to 270 over there so I'm just going to type it in so it's exact 270 and that picks up perfectly where it's at so again I'm going to make this a little bit bigger so by doing that again I'm going to hit the shift key this time keep your finger on shift left click and then drag it out to the size that i want and i think that's not a million miles away where it is i might just want to reshape the actual triangle a little bit just to make it a bit more um appropriate to how we want it so i'm going to be about like that i think and then make sure it's central still like so maybe just drag it in a touch more and i'm going to change the color so making sure it's selected up to style and then here we've got the fill it's currently on black i'm going to change that to white Okay, so now we've got the actual triangle in. Now I'm going to add the text, the subscribe text itself. So click on text. And then you can see the text box has appeared. And I'm going to centralize that. Drag it to about the size that I roughly want. Bearing in mind, I can resize this in a minute if I need to do. And I'm looking for this being equidistance between here uh, and there, roughly. That's what I'm aiming for. So double click in the text box and I'm going to click, um, type in uh, subscribe like so. Make sure it's highlighted. And then obviously we've got the text box that I'm currently on at the moment. I'm going to change the color to the white again. So the text color, change that to white. And I'm also going to increase the size. And you can use the up and down buttons to increase the size. Or you can type in and have a guess at it. So I'm going to go 200. That's too big. And I'm going to go 160. See what that looks like. Uh, not a million miles away, I'd say. Maybe go to, no, maybe 160 is going to be about right, I'd say. Uh, so let's have a look and see what that looks like. So I wouldn't say that's looking too bad. I can just grab all of the bounding box around it and just move it around a bit if I need to do, uh, if I'm not quite happy. So if I want it a bit nearer and then maybe change the actual red box in by clicking on the red box and then just bring it in so it looks something like that I want it to do. And I think that's better. Again, I can change the font here and all sorts of different things. Um, you know, to Jill Sands if I want it to be a bit more modern a font. Um, so you can change a few things. But I'm just going to leave it on default uh, for now. Okay, so now we've got the overall box, which is great. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to actually highlight all of these, um, well, these three different shapes. We've got two of the shapes and text. I'm going to group them together. So I'm going to drag a box all the way around them all, right click and then group them together. Okay, so this is now one group. So now I can grab hold of this and then sort of move it around my um, template that I've got going on here. So we now need to add uh, our mouse cursor coming into our subscribe button onto our uh, template. So again, I'm going to click on shape at the top. I'm going to do a search for arrow, like so. I'm going to pick this one up here. You can have whatever you want. I'm going to pick this one and then click like so. So just one click and it puts it into the image. Then I'm going to obviously drag it left click and just drag it around. Again, by pushing the command key, I can spin this round. So hit command key on the keyboard, keep your finger on it, and then spin it around to the angle that I think is appropriate. And I might want to, you see how this vertical here, I might want to match that up to the vertical on the actual bottom of the red bounding box. So again, command key, just spin it around a little bit. And I'm going to have it, you know, something so it's parallel to the bottom of this here. So um, looking like that, I can go to the range and change it here. You know, if it's 140, um, it's not 140, it's going to be 142, I think, is it somewhere on there. So we'll leave it at that. Now we might want to make it a little bit bigger if we're not quite happy. So again, shift key. Keep your finger on shift key while grabbing one of the nodes and then just drag it out a bit. And then I might want to expand the tail. So let go of all the keyboard key uh, shortcuts and just drag the tail out a little bit. So like so. And I say it's not a million miles away. I might just make it a touch bigger. Shift key again. Left click drag. 
like so. Okay, that's great. So now I'm going to change the actual color. So I've gone across to style, gone to fill, I'm going to click on white. So now we've got the white uh, mouse that we're going to have going across and then clicking as we go up there. So I might have it sort of in this plane here, looks about right. So I'm going to go for about starting there. Okay, so this is where the magic happens. So now we've got this all grouped together. We've also got our mouse, which is separate. So I'm making sure that the mouse icon or the arrow is selected down here. And then I'm going to click on animate. And then we've got build in, action and build out. Make sure you pick up on the action one. And I'm going to add an effect on there. And then from here, I'm going to do a move. And when I click on move, it will put a move in for me. But I don't want this particular move. I want to drag this end finish to this move across over here. So I'm going to, now you can adjust these as you go along. So I'm going to look for the parallel line about so. And I might want to drag this one in a little bit more because it's a bit too far out maybe. I mean, I might have it starting on the edge of the actual bounding box, but you can start it wherever you want on the screen. I'm just going to have mine sort of there, I think. And then you can preview this by clicking on the preview button. So it'll show the movement like so. That's great. I've got one movement in. I need, now need to put another movement going up in the up direction. So I'm going to add action on the bottom here. And I'm going to do another move. Again, it does a, puts a move in for me, but I don't want that. I'm going to grab hold of the node and drag it up and then maybe have it sort of there. Again, you can tweak these as you go along. I'm just sort of picking it up um, and making it up for this video to keep it as short as possible, but you can tweak yours as best you can. So now we've got two movements going on. Now we've got this first movement, second, and we can preview them all by clicking on the play button at the top. Like so. But what that does at this point it is waiting for me to click on something. So it's it's presuming it to be a present, um, you know, a presentation where you're standing in front of somebody talking and you click the mouse to move to the next bit. We want it to be in one fluid motion. So what we need to do is edit these um, motions or moves by going into the actual build order button in this section here. So making sure we're on action still, build order at the bottom. And these are the two arrow movements. So we've got the first arrow movement, which is this one, the second arrow movement, which is that one. And we want to make sure the second arrow movement is selected and we want to start after the first one has finished. So now we can preview. And that's great. That's the movement that we want. What else do we need to happen? We need, so I'm going to close that a second. So we need this group of um, texts and shapes to actually do the click sort of action. So I'm going to make sure action is selected. Make sure that the group is selected here. We're going to click on add, a, add an effect. And then we're going to, which one are we going to use? I think we're going to use the pop, I think. So we'll use the pop, that's the one. You can use the bounce and just leave the bounce a bit less. So you can play around with these as you go along. But you can see there, if I click preview, you can see the bounce, what's going to happen. And you can change the duration. It might be a bit too bouncy, so I'm just going to lower it down a bit. And maybe um, reduce the scale a slight bit as well, so it's not quite as pronounced. So you can see the duration, maybe a bit too tight at that. So that's probably a bit better, I'd say. So we're happy at that. So again, now we've got the actual movement of the arrow and we've also got the um, pop of the actual group of shapes. Uh, so we're going to build order. And then in here, we've got the last one, which was this group of shapes doing the pop. And we want that to start when uh, number two has got to the up position. So after build two. So now it'll group in there and then we can preview. So that's great. So the only thing that we're missing is the click. Uh, which is the sound that we got right at the beginning of the video. So I'm going to go to my finder. I'm going to find the click, which was in this file. If you remember, I saved it into subscribe call to action folder. So I'm going to click in there, find the file that we saved. I'm going to left click and drag that onto my uh, keynote presentation here. So at this point, it doesn't actually, if I push play now, it won't do anything. Um, it won't make any sounds in this one. So if I click preview, you can't hear anything, it doesn't do anything. What we need to do is make sure that we've got, if this is closed down in yours, you need to make sure you click on the build order. And then in here, you've got your two arrow movements, you've got your group doing the pop movement, and then they've got the mouse click. We want the mouse click selected and we want to start after the uh, pop action. So you can do it with, if you want it to click the same time, we'll do it after. Um, and see what it looks like and sounds like. So let's do a preview. So if I click preview now, you'll notice it won't do any sound you couldn't hear anything but if you click play button you will be able to hear the sound
like so. So you heard the click. So that's great. Uh, and we think that like, that sounds good. You can play around with this and put the start after build or with build free, for example, and then maybe put, click the preview and play and see what that sounds like. So both sound as good, I think, and both look, have the same effect. Like I say, you can position the arrow where you want. Uh, I'm just happy with it going across it and into the middle there. Okay, so now we've got the whole animation produced. We now need to save this so we can use it in other videos. So let's close this down. Don't worry about this icon on the top here. This is uh, won't show on your final thing. That's just showing you that there's an audio file attached to this actual image at the moment. That's all it is. It's not uh, going to show this little play button here. Okay, so let's get this exported. But the last thing we need to do, I just need to change back this blue uh, background that I've got here. So I'm going to select the background. I'm going to click on Format. Make sure background is selected and make sure no fill. If you remember, I spoke about that earlier and said I wanted it to so you could see the actual shape being built. Uh, now I've got no fill, it goes black, which basically means it's going to be transparent when I export it. So exporting, we just need to go to File, and we need to Export to. We want to export to a movie, like so. And then in here, yours is possibly on 720, something like that. Um, and then we need to make sure that we go to Custom. And then within custom, we need to make sure we pick up, again, it might be H.264, yours is on. You need to make sure they do is Apple ProRes 4444. And then also make sure this tick box export with transparent backgrounds is selected on the underside like so. Playback is self-playing, and then we're going to click Next. And again, you can change the timings and stuff in there. Uh, if you can just play around with them, but I'm just doing the default ones uh, so you can see how easy it is to do. So I'm going to call this something. So this is... Um, Subscribe, uh, call, if I can spell, call to action, um, button, subscribe, call to action button, like so, click on export, make sure it's saved in, I'm going to save it onto that same button there, click on export in that same folder there, click on export, creating me, uh, movie, and that's it, that's it saved, so I'm going to minimize this down now. Um, and then let's have a look. This is our uh, call to action that we've just created. So I'll push the space bar. And then it should move across, up, and then click like so. So, brilliant, that's working. So now we can drag this into any movie that we've created or whatever software you use. I'll just show you it in iMovie. So I'm going to open iMovie up, and then let's go to Projects. Let's just save that one like that. Create a new one, create a new movie. I'm just going to drag... A bit of a, what have we got? Get it right. So I'm just going to drag that in like so. So now we've got this drone footage. I'll just drag this into my timeline. So you can see the drone footage is here at the moment um, going over. And I haven't got anything in. Now if I want to add my button into this so it is playing over the top of that video. I can then go to my folder that, where I saved it. Uh, subscribe call to action. This is the button here. And I'm going to drag that onto my media folder that I'm working with here. Then I'm just going to drag it down into my timeline and drag it, I don't know, maybe here. So as the drone's going across and you're talking, you'll see the button appear and I'll show you how to resize that in a second. So there we go, it comes up, plays, and then does the click noise. But it's obviously quite big. You can resize that here though. So if I make sure that this is selected, this layer, go up to this um, overlay settings box at the top, click on that one, where it says cut away, got picture in picture. And then I can resize this however I want. So let me just go back to the beginning of it so I can see where the arrow is starting. And you might want it showing up in the corner. Uh, you might want it in the top corner. Uh, it could be anywhere wherever you want in the video. And then let's get uh, back to where we were. And then hit play. And then you should see it pop up in the top left hand corner of my movie. And then do its action like so. Okay, so that is it. That's how to create a call to action subscribe button using free programs that are built into your Mac. That's using Keynote and iMovie. I really hope this video was helpful. If it was, please do subscribe to my channel. Please do hit me up with any comments below. They are always, always appreciated. Hit the bell icon to be alerted to any new videos I make. And hopefully if you have subscribed, I will see you in the next video. And thanks again for watching the Computer Lab.